Welcome back to Echo Ridge Gaming and our max difficulty achievement run. Today, we're going to make it to space. First, I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of the colony, Angry Forest. Angry Forest has an interest in researching and rocketry, which is perfect for us because we needed a pilot. So we brought them aboard to do just that. Because not only are they going to have the astronomy necessary to use the telescope, the rocket piloting to be able to use the rocket control station, but they also have an interest in operating. So that way, in the future, when we're actually creating all those data banks, Angry Forest here is going to have an interest in every single thing they need, which is going to help keep the morale pretty high, despite the fact that they're going to be in a rocket interior that typically doesn't have a lot of morale generating effects. We're also going to be keeping our eyes out for a pick em up and set them down dupe, because not only would that be helpful around here, but eventually we want to get into pyrotechnics. Because since the newest update dropped, your plumbers can now get promoted into pyrotechnics to be able to make all those wonderful ballistics. I thought we already had a winner here in this Turner, but having a duplicate that specializes in picking things up and setting them down with noodle alarms just really doesn't make sense. So in this case, we're just going to take the curative tablets. Speaking of medicine, we've also started on pretty much full-time basic rad pill manufacturing. Because we've been spending so much time up here finishing off the spaceport, a lot of our dupes have started getting radiation sickness. Because as a reminder, it's 375 rads per cycle out here. So we added the basic rad pill to everybody's consumables, and then set Majin Lord up to continuously create rad pills, using a cheeky little method involving a refrigerator. This refrigerator is set to hold nothing but basic rad pills, and specifically 20 kilos worth of them. Once the refrigerator has 20 rad pills in it, the refrigerator is going to send out a green signal saying it's full, the knot gate's going to flip it to red, which is then going to turn the apothecary off. I figured 20 was a good number because we are sitting at 15 dupes. Also in the background, we've expanded our great hall to have 20 mess tables, which is a pretty good number. Because at the minimum, we're going to need at least 20 duplicates to earn the no place like clone achievement. But because we're going to start adding dupes, we're going to be keeping a very close eye on that barbecue. Remember, right now we have five hatch ranches and you can sort of depend on each hatch ranch to supply two and a half duplicates worth of food considering they all have the ravenous hunger. Or another way to look at it is it takes two ranches to feed five dupes. So with five ranches, we only have enough barbecue coming from the hatches for 12 and a half dupes. We also have pips, but they really don't supply a whole lot of food. So something else I'm going to be doing in the background is finding another food source. But considering one thing that this colony does have is water. And we have plenty of blossom seeds over here on our other planetoid. I think berry blossoms might be the way to go. Also, if we can get into some sweet wheat production, we'll be able to turn those berry blossoms and sweet wheat into wonderful berry sludge. And the great thing about berry sludge is it never spoils, which makes it perfect for our space missions. It's also not too bad at a good plus three quality just like your barbecue, which means it'll give the duplicates plus eight to morale. Which brings us to the primary purpose of today's episode, and that is our wonderful rocket. Here we have our beautiful steam engine down. The steam engine requires 150 kilos worth of steam. The question becomes, how are we actually going to create that steam? And it just happens to be one method that we know makes a lot of steam, and that's by using a thermo aqua tuner. There's going to be a couple of problems with this. First, we have no steam turbine because, well, we have no plastic. That's not such a huge deal. Because we're going to be dumping a bunch of water into this room continuously, we should be able to control that liquid flow in order to keep this thermo aqua tuner somewhat cool, at least under the 325 degrees that it's rated for. At the same time, though, the other problem becomes that you have to dump the chill being created by the thermo aqua tuner somewhere. Well, remember when we were talking about sleet wheat needed in the creation of berry sludge? Well, sleet wheat kind of likes it cold, from minus 55 to 5 degrees. So in a way, our berry sludge production is actually going to end up powering our rocketry program. Weird, isn't it? So the first step in getting all this done is actually starting a sleet wheat farm. And in that, we need to know how much sleet wheat we actually need. So on the math side, we're going to start off with a requirement of 40,000 calories per cycle, which will be enough to feed 20 duplicates. In order to be able to get that many calories, we're gonna need to be creating 10 berry sludges per cycle. 
which means we're going to need 50 sweet wheat grain and 16,000 calories worth of bristleberry. That's starting to point us in the right direction. Let's start with the sweet wheat. We need 50 units per cycle. Sweet wheat math sort of makes it easy in the fact that it takes 18 cycles to grow and you're given 18 sweet wheat grains on the other side for a return of one sweet wheat per cycle. So in order to get 50 sweet wheat grains, we're going to need, you guessed it, 50 sweet wheat. And while that sounds easy enough, it also means we're going to need a lot of fertilizer and irrigation. With a requirement of 50 sweet wheat, it means we would need 250 kilos worth of dirt per cycle and 8,000 kilos worth of water per cycle. And while the water sounds like a lot, 1,000 kilos per cycle, when you divide that by 600 seconds in every cycle, it only becomes 1.6 kilos per second. Well, 1.66 repeating, of course. Instead, I think the actual limitation is the dirt. 250 kilos per cycle is hefty. Yeah, we're running pips, but they only provide 20 kilos per cycle. Which brings us all the way to the fact that we're at the minimum going to need another pip ranch. We're also going to need to start taming a lot more of these geysers. Right now, we only have one brine geyser supplying us 1,507 grams per second, or 1.5 kilos. That almost pays for our entire sleet wheat cost. Except the bristle blossoms are also going to require 20 kilos per cycle. Not to mention, we still need water for oxygen as well. So I think we need to meter our expectations on the berry sludge. So instead of shooting for all 20 dupes to be on berry sludge, maybe we'll just shoot for 10, which will half the requirements. All right, so now that we know we only need 20,000 calories worth of berry sludge, or five berry sludges per cycle, which means we only need five times 1,600 calories worth of bristle blossom, or 8,000 calories. And with bristle blossoms having a life cycle of six cycles, in order to obtain that 1,600 calories, which means every cycle, the bristle blossom is going to give you 266.66, once again, repeating, of course, calories per cycle, so we'll need a total of 30 bristle blossoms. And with a requirement of 20 kilograms per cycle of water, means we're going to need another 600 kilos. So for both of those plants, it brings our total water requirement up to 1,100 kilos per cycle, or 1.833, I'm not going to say it again, kilos per second. Which seems doable, considering we have three geysers on the planetoid. Since this one is sort of self-tamed, we're going to go ahead and analyze it to see what its exact output is. But the one cool salt slush geyser almost provides the 1.83 kilos per second. So as long as both of these geysers are somewhat similar, we'll have one geyser dedicated to nothing but our crops. And then the two geysers will be available for oxygen production and carbon dioxide removal. Another good aspect of only using 25 sleet wheat means we can actually get away with just the one pip ranch to supply all of the dirt. Step one is going to be bringing all the blossom seeds over to the home planetoid. Then we'll do the same thing with the sleet wheat grain. And then it'll just be a matter of setting up the ranches. For the bristle blossoms, we're just going to put them inside the hatch ranch. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. With that pretty much done, I'll be turning my sights on the sleet wheat farm itself. Give me a few minutes and I'll give you an update once we're all ready. We finished analyzing this saltwater geyser, and great news, it's a monster at 3.1 kilos per second. So we're definitely going to be tapping into it relatively soon. The bristle blossoms are in and looking great. For the sleet wheat, we're setting up a dirt delivery system. The dirt's going to come directly from the pip ranch, and then ride these rails Well, it'll split 50-50 between these two conveyor chutes. That way the auto sweepers will be able to fertilize the plants, without us having to worry about it. Which brings up a point. Some of you may have wondered, why didn't I just pip plant all the sleet wheat and berry blossoms? Well, because they would have been wild instead of domesticated, on the bristle blossoms, for instance, it would have taken 24 cycles instead of six, which means instead of 30 bristle blossoms, we would have needed four times that amount at 120 plants. And instead of only needing 25 sleet wheat, we would have needed 100. Remember, this is a tiny colony, and we just don't have the room for that many plants. Now we're going to go over our steam creation and sleet wheat chilling system. So far, we have a standard thermal aqua tuner made out of steel and a steel gas pump in here. We're going to bring water in from our wonderful water tank system over here. 
that water is going to drip down onto the thermo aqua tuner where hopefully it'll start creating steam because the thermo aqua tuner is going to be very hot because it's going to be cooling down the water that is going through here now i know this looks a little different we only did it this way to save on metals plus it should be plenty of cooling potential so we'll just go all the way across and then cancel it looks like we had a couple that weren't quite done yet not a big deal and that cooling loop is a pretty standard cooling loop we're going to be using brine because brine has a pretty low freezing point at minus 22 and a half what's probably not as simple is there's a couple of interconnected automation systems that's going to help keep this thing going first is the end gate with inputs both from the liquid pipe thermo sensor and a thermo sensor here this thermo sensor is responsible for making sure it doesn't get too hot in this room and will turn off the thermo aqua tuner when it gets too hot this liquid pipe thermo sensor is responsible for making sure the sleet wheat farm stays thermo regulated the last bit of automation we need is an ability to control when we're letting in more water because at a point we'll have so much steam in this room that a we'll just never end up using but also we don't want to bring so much water in here that the thermo aqua tuner can't turn it all into steam based on how much cooling it's actually going to be able to provide inside the sleet wheat ranch because for instance if we're cooling this thing too much the thermo aqua tuner is going to get too hot and if we're not cooling it enough the thermo aqua tuner is not going to be able to provide as much heat and therefore not turn the water into steam which of course we need for the wonderful steam engine so for that system we're going to use both an atmo sensor and a hydro sensor this atmo sensor is going to detect how much steam is in the room and this hydro sensor is going to detect how much potential steam is in the room we're going to tie them together with another and gate and then have some weird awkward automation runs and then the and gate is going to be connected to a liquid shutoff what's weird about this system is it would be largely unnecessary if we had a steam turbine so once again in this series we're sort of putting the horse before the cart which gets me thinking doesn't the horse belong before the cart and as usual this system may blow up in our face and just not work but i kind of like trying new things and designing different systems we're now filling up our coolant loop with the brine and after that's done we're pretty much ready to get this thing going now we did connect this room to our oxygen output because there needs to be an environment in here right now there's only like 18 grams of carbon dioxide because apparently the little buggers still exhale even though they have those masks on but the environment in here is going to help retain that chill everything else around it is going to be a vacuum so we don't really have to worry about the chill leaving the room rather we're just trying to make sure there's enough of an environment to hold a little bit more of the chill and without further ado i think we're about ready now right now this is a vacuum which is how i kind of want to keep it so i'm hoping that just by building these two tiles carbon dioxide doesn't end up back in here when the duplicate is exhaling some of our sensors this one is set to below 20k and the hydro sensor it's and gated to is set to if it's below 100k when both of these things are true the automation means that we need more water or steam so a green signal will be sent to this liquid shutoff this thermo sensor is set to below 200 degrees we may be able to make that go a little bit higher if need be but as long as this thermo aqua tuner is below 200 degrees it's fine to turn back on and then we're going to set this liquid pipe thermo sensor which is going to control how cold that room is to one degree the reason why we're going with one degree is because we don't want any of the water coming in to end up freezing in the pipes as a further precaution we went from liquid pipes to insulated liquid pipes once the water enters the sleet wheat farm the last piece of automation is this atmo sensor which is basically the on and off switch for this gas pump whenever our engine needs more steam we'll turn it on we'll have it send a green signal otherwise we'll keep it locked on red we also have a steam overflow here that way whatever little steam is left over will dissipate into the environment instead of just sitting here in the pipes because if it did it eventually would cool and the pipes would crack i'm gonna let this run for a little bit to get the sleet wheat farm down to the five degrees or below that the sleet wheat will be able to grow in and then we'll be able to send the sleet wheat over because remember sleet wheat can go stale and turn into rot and we don't want that to happen while we're waiting for the farm to come online of course i'll bet you if i get it planted it'll be just fine and just like that we have sleet wheat that's growing 
Look at us. And even better, the thermal aqua tuner is up to about 94 degrees. So after a few more activations, it should hit over that 100 degrees and make that water flash into steam. And we have steam. Right now we're at about 50 kilos worth of pressure, not shabby. And since it's not below 20 kilos, the room is not asking for more water. But we can start the process of taking some steam out of the room by just hitting above. And now the gas pump will get to work. Now these pipes are going to have to acclimatize to the steam, especially considering the steam is right there at that threshold where it wants to condense back into water. So we'll get a couple of pipe cracks, like this one there, until the steam gets a little bit hotter and the pipes end up heating up a little. I do really wish that the Atmo sensors went a little higher than 20 kilos. It would make this system just a little bit better, but for now it's just fine. I also lowered this hydro sensor down to 50 kilos. That way it's not going to take us so long to be able to empty all the steam out of here. Because we eventually are going to want to bring water in here, not only to add more steam, but also to be able to keep this thermo aqua tuner cool. And we finally siphoned enough steam out of the room, and both the Atmo sensor and the hydro sensor lit up, enabling the liquid shutoff, which brings in more cold water. And so far, it's brought the thermo aqua tuner down to about 76 degrees. So the wonderful system was able to fill our rocket and grow our sleet wheat. That's not too bad for a combo system. The last thing we're going to go over today is our wonderful rocket. After all, it's the entire reason we've done everything today. First, we start off with our wonderful steam engine that has a not bad height of 25 tiles. Then we went with the spacefare module, the gas cargo canister, I'll get to that in a minute, rover's module, the trailblazer module, the battery, and the solar panel module. I don't know where we found 200 kilos worth of glass, but apparently one of the Gravitas buildings had a little bit, so we took it and built the solar panel module. But the great thing about this rocket is the gas loader and the unloader. We have the gas cargo canister accepting oxygen, which means any oxygen that we feed into the loader is going to be sent into the gas cargo canister. Inside our spacefarer module, we have a gas output fitting that'll take all the gas from inside that canister in this case, oxygen, in order to provide a breathable atmosphere for our duplicants. The oxygen coming from that canister is also going to be responsible for keeping our oxygen mass docks full. On this side, we have a gas element sensor that is looking for carbon dioxide. And once it finds that there is some carbon dioxide, it turns this gas pump on. It then sends everything it siphons up into this gas intake fitting that is connected to the exact same gas cargo canister. And that's where the gas rocket port unloader comes into play. We have it taking all the carbon dioxide from that gas cargo canister and dumping it into space. So the gas cargo canister combined with the loader, the unloader, and these wonderful little fittings kind of act as a gas filter. Now right now, because we only have one solar panel module, it's not doing a great job. After all, the solar panel is only providing 41 watts. Whereas the output fitting and the gas pump itself require 300. This isn't going to be a problem while we're in flight because the steam engine provides 600 watts. But while it's on the planetoid, we're going to need a little bit more power. There's a couple things we could do about that. We could use ladder beds inside the barracks and then put a wheel in here. The problem with that solution is it would let a lot of radiation in and the dupes would probably get radiation sickness fairly quick. The other problem is the wheel is an industrial machine. So it would take off the barracks bonus and what's eventually going to be the great hall just as soon as I put a plant in here. There we go. That is much better. Now the barracks bonus is not that big of a deal. And truth be told, between the great hall of plus six and the berry sludge being plus eight, that's going to give us 14 morale right out of the gate. And that's not counting the downtime morale and any other little bonuses, such as, for instance, using the party line phone but we wouldn't be able to deal with that radiation. And I can't seem to figure out how to get two cots or two ladder beds in here while also making a wheel fit. It'd be really great if the dupes didn't have to use the outhouse. And yes, we're using the outhouse temporarily because we don't have the plastic for the wall toilet. So about the only other option is once we do get to wherever we're going, we're just gonna put a wheel on the ground and plug it straight into the battery module. Not ideal, but unfortunately necessary. And our destination is going to be one of these two planetoids. But that is going to have to wait till next episode. Also soon, 
we're going to need to upgrade this oxygen system. With three gas pumps in it, we're only able to provide oxygen for 15 dupes. Not too bad, but it'd be really nice to have a full Rodriguez sort of system to really be able to provide a lot more oxygen to our rocket in a much quicker fashion. As a temporary stopgap, we added another gas pump. We now have two pumps for one line and two pumps for the other. So now the maximum amount of dupes that we'll be able to provide oxygen for is going to be the 8.88 times 2, or a little over 17. And after fixing a rare misplaced bridge, we're seeing a little bit better flow. And before I let you get out of here, I wanted to give you a small update on DK Oz and Doritos P over on Enverilin. They've got new bathrooms. Very simple system. Polluted water comes in, water sieve cleans it, and then it goes into this buffer tank. Whereas the first priority will be to refill the bathrooms, but once the buffer tank gets full, the overflow is going right to a bristle blossom. I suppose I need to get that some light, huh? It'd be great if I could just get the shine bug to go in there. But I'll work on that a little bit later. I hope you had a great time in this episode and are still enjoying the series. So let me know what you think in the comments below. As a matter of fact, you can also leave a comment on what we should rename the Spirit of Mars. Nothing against Mars, I just think we can do better. So until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.